Hello guys, welcome back. What you see on your screen here is an award letter for a fully funded scholarship at RMIT University in Australia. Someone won the scholarship on this YouTube channel just last year. You can see the date, the 1st of November. And I'm happy to share this with you because this student is already in Australia studying for a fully funded PhD in biological sciences. So this is what is award letter. And let's scroll down a little bit more and see what it covers. You can see here that it covers tuition, international tuition. And when you scroll down a little bit more, you see that it covers stipend as well of over, let's make it bigger, 34,000. Australian dollars. Other benefits like health insurance, relocation fees, everything covered through and through. I remember I sent me a message not too long ago, actually some months back in February, that everything is set. You can see it here. Hello, Chief. I trust you're good. All set and good. I'm flying Monday 19th to begin my program. Thanks for the one attractive post you that did the magic. And I responded, great. Good luck with your studies. So this might just be you in a couple of months. So I'm showing you this just to what are your interests and to show you that this is possible. And by the way, Christopher, who got the scholarship, is not the only person awarded a fully funded um, scholarship at this university. We also have Jacob here. He got a PhD in a PhD scholarship in education. This is his award letter. And let's scroll down and let's see um, if we can get more on what the offer covers. Okay, you can see here that the offer is quite similar to what we saw from Christopher. Everything covered tuition, health insurance, relocation allowance and the rest. So this might just be you in the coming months. So do not be wary, just follow the instructions and you will be fine. So welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Victor once again. It's another day and we have another scholarship. If you're joining us for the first time, you're welcome. But where have you been? There are lots of videos already on this YouTube channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you find something that catches your interest. And if you're a returning viewer, a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for your constant support. And I hope you get the scholarship sooner than later. In case you've not subscribed, this is a good time to do so before we dive into the business of today. So quickly subscribe as we are waiting for you. Thank you very much. So let's go. So we're talking about fully funded opportunities here at RMIT University. So the scholarship is known as the Research Stipend Scholarships both for home and international students and as you can see here the scholarship is open the 2025 research scholarship from the letters we saw earlier i think they resumed i think in march april jacob left in march or in, in january actually he left in january or february um to resume studies in march so it means by February, March next year, you might just be on your way as well. So it is open and let me show you the application procedure. We've seen the value of the scholarship already over 34,000 Australian dollars, covers tuition, covers your living stipend, covers um, travel allowance, or at least part of your travel allowance as well. To be eligible, do not worry, they want high achieving candidates. So if you have a distinction, it's a good thing. But if you don't have a distinction, at least a very strong 2-1 can also help your application. I think those who got it last day, they had very good results. Not necessarily a distinction, but a very good result. So you can just do the same and you will be fine. So how do we particularly apply for this scholarship? So let me open the another tab to show you how to apply for this scholarship. Let that load a little bit more. It's quite raining at the moment, so my internet is not quite fast. But hopefully the pages will load on time and we'll start what we need to. So there are a number of stages. First, you find the program. 
identify a project. So it means a number of these scholarships are project-based. It means the supervisor has a project already that he or she is working on and they want masters, PhD students to come and help them execute the project. So most times the project already defined, you will just show that you have the skills, you have the background, you have the interest to undertake the project. Then before you apply for the scholarship. So choose a program. There are several programs here in different fields, particle sciences, social sciences, humanities. You can open that for you and let it load. And then you can also check the English language requirements. So these are the different programs. I could just type here education. I think one of the previous scholars from this channel got a PhD in education. So let's see if we can find something similar in education. And remember, these are research degrees, either a research master's or a PhD. So if you're using the filter function here, you have to click on either a research master's or a PhD, or just choose research programs, research programs. If you choose coursework programs, you might not be eligible or you will not be eligible for a scholarship. It has to be research based. So now I've typed in education and this is Masters of Education. And as you can see here, Masters of Education by Research. So this is what you're looking for. You click on it and see if you fulfill the academic requirements and um, the documents you need to put in place and every other thing. So this is it. Of course, you meant to read the instructions already provided, but I'm rushing to admissions. So here you require a minimum of a bachelor's degree. And um, that's just, that's the normal admission um, requirement. And usually a 2-1, most times a 2-1. So I think it's very simple and um, the basic requirements. So we can just check the English language requirements as well because this might be a headache for a number of people if you have to write any of those English language tests. Quite expensive, but they take quite um, some time to prepare for. So let's see if we can get a waiver. I've gone to the International Students tab or International Applicants tab. And let's see, English language proficiency. And um, let's go to this one. So accepted English language tests might probably just give you those tests and those exams. But let's go to other qualifications they might accept apart from those English language tests. So there is good news. Recognize qualifications and English language speaking countries. So people from these countries would even have to write another English language test. And already at the bottom here, I can see my country, Nigeria. So that's good. If you're Nigerian, praise the Lord. <laughs> you do not have to write any English language test. There are other instructions here on how to get waivers. So read them and see how best you can squeeze out an English language waiver. So that's it for the English language. That is it for the basic admissions requirements. That you need like a bachelor's degree, good enough, usually a 2-1. If you have a distinction, that's good to apply. So if you have the documents, what do you do? Now you have the qualification. So you've, let's check the eligibility criteria. For This is for a master's, this is for a PhD. Of course, it's good to go to the course page to see the particular instruction for your own course, which we did for a master's of education just now. So what you do next is to look for a research project in your area of interest. And also read the instructions very closely. They said for the College of Science, Technology and Engineering and Mathematics, you can select up to three projects. Up to three projects. And you must submit a statement indicating your interest in the project. For business law, you select just one and submit a research proposal. For um, design, social context, as humanities, social sciences, creative arts, you also choose one and submit a research proposal. And then you have to identify a supervisor. I, very important, you have to identify a supervisor. Get a green light from a supervisor. So get a yes from a supervisor before you proceed to apply for admissions. So the admissions button or the application button for admission is just down here.
and you can apply directly by the way without an agent so i've talked about the project let's look at the different projects as i said the supervisors or the departments have already listed out a number of projects projects that are funded what you just need to do is to look for a project that's closely aligned with your area of interest and apply for that project so the projects are loading let's let, let me let them come up um, and i'll give you a brief one on how to go about them so let's allow the projects load so while we're doing that remember to go through the different instructions but here it's also said that you can propose your own research and i would say that the majority of those who got the scholarship in the past rather used existing research so I applied for existing projects as opposed to proposing a new one by themselves because it's easier to say oh you suggested the project already so let me just show you that i can carry out that project there's already funding for that but you're not sure that if you propose your own project that you find a supervisor for that one in the first place or you will get funding for it it's not very clear so i would advise that you use one of these projects already existing so let's see the projects are still loading let's let me reload the page and see if the projects will come up and then we'll proceed with describing the application's requirements and procedure. So the projects have loaded and we have over a thousand projects here. And the first one here is about financial literacy among migrant small business entrepreneurs. So what do we do here? You can always use a filter function to select your own designated field of study and all that but for the sake of this video we won't be using the future function we'll just look at the general available projects whether it's business whether it's education whether it's biology whether it's physics chemistry climate change cyber security everything is there but the first one already is already quite interesting it's about financial literacy for small businesses of uh, migrant entrepreneurs so this is a very nice one and there's already a small description here of what the project is all about so if you need to submit a research proposal remember we look at the former we looked at the former ad applications requirements for the different departments let's go back there yeah to identify projects and it says for those um, applying for law or business they might have to submit a research proposal so what do you do this research already has pro um, provided you with a bit of a literature review or an overview of what what the project is all about so it means you can expand on this a little bit more usually a proposal should be like 1000 2000 word um, limit depending on any other instructions given on to you on how to write a proposal but if no instruction is given at least a thousand word proposal but with this information already provided you can take advantage of the literature already given here and expand on this topic on the research question and probably propose a method on how to go about this um, project question but remember you have to contact the supervisor and the names of the supervisors have already been provided here you can see here they have actually three names so what do you do you copy the name and then check if you can find the name look for the search bar on the university page and um, let's copy and paste the name here and see what happens and see if you can find that supervisor you're looking for the supervisor in order to find their email address and contact details and um, university profile. So, Professor Hamed Abdullahi Ahmed is here. I found his profile. It didn't even take me up to a minute. And then you can see his email address is already here. So, that's great. And then you can see his projects. You can see his grants. You can see the number of people is supervising and supervision interest so what do you do with this information so of course you use the email address to send him i'm assuming it's a man an email 
So you say request for um, masters by research supervision or PhD supervision, and then you can quote the project here, financial literacy, quote it in full, and then introduce yourself, your academic background, your professional background, and tell him of your intention to apply for either a master's by research or a PhD at the university. Tell him about the project you're interested in and tell him your background, that you have the skills or you have the experience to undertake this project. It's also a good idea to attach your CV. There's a video on my channel already, how to write a CV and how to actually write an email to a supervisor. So do that and watch that as well. The link will be in the description box. So attach your CV, attach, if you already have a proposal, you can attach that or tell the professor that I have a proposal, I'm working on a proposal in case you're interested to look at it as well. So it's a good thing to attach your CV, attach other relevant documents you think will get you attention from the supervisor. So I hope that is clear. So find a project and look for how to contact the supervisor or supervisors in charge of the project. Usually wait for like a week to get a response. If you do not get a response after a week, you can send a reminder. If you do not get a response after two weeks, then I think it's advisable to um, contact another supervisor or look for another project. I hope that is clear. So there are over a thousand projects and I'm sure there's at least one that will be in your area of interest. So dig deep, use the search function, select your relevant area of specialization and I'm sure you find something. So once you get a yes from a professor, then you can proceed to actually apply for the course. You have to get a yes, remember, before you go to apply for a course. And that's it um, at the moment. It's quite a straightforward process. Make sure you are eligible. Make sure you find a project. Make sure you get a supervisor and then move on to apply. So that's it, guys. A fully funded master's and PhD scholarship in Australia. As you can see, covers your tuition, covers stipend, covers um, or at least partly pays for your international travel covers fully your health insurance. And this is not just a joke. We actually have people on this channel who have actually won the scholarship. So we have Christopher and we have Jacob who actually won the scholarship in the past. So this might just be you in the coming months. So please do not take this as a joke. Do not take this line down. Start working on it as soon as you can. So as usual, guys, I cannot wait to celebrate you. Get to work, start putting your documents together, start making other contacts, and I will see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now, and do not, do not forget to subscribe. Cheers.